Good afternoon, everyone. Great to see you on this edition of Best Practices. We have some great guests today that we're going to hear from on probably the most important topic in this business. When people ask me, hey, John, what should I do to work on in my practice? I say the most important thing is the client experience. It's the thing that keeps clients around. Keeping clients around long term is a big deal. Their assets tend to grow. Sometimes they have more assets to bring in. It's really a big deal, but it is also the foundation of client acquisition. The easiest, quickest way to get a new client and the number one way new clients are meeting their advisor is through an introduction, i.e. a referral, we call it in, in our, our business. Referrals come from those clients that see value, they're satisfied, they're advocates, they refer others. And if your client experience is great, they're more likely to refer. If it's not great, there's probably something there. When people say, gosh, I wish I was getting more referrals. I wish I was getting more new clients. I would say, hey, this is the place to start. Let's go back to your client experience and see what we can enhance because they are the quickest path to new clients. So it's really, really critical. So we're gonna talk about just some basic fundamentals and then how to expand on it. Um, many of you have seen it, if, if you haven't, um, I'm happy to email this to everybody. Um, this is our uh, client experience timeline example. So it's got different levels of clients. And down here you'll see, you know, based on the level of clients, some different uh, interaction frequency of face-to-face -face meetings, maybe over the phone or Teams, brief phone calls, links and meetings. It's also got different topics throughout the year, which we'll hear some examples of how advisors do this. Obviously more topics for top clients, less topics for smaller clients. There can be product focuses. There's article touches that go out, other little touches that that go, and even um, gift ideas for life events that occur. And uh, what's nice about having all of these organized is if you're leveraging some team members to help you execute on the uh, the the client experience. If they know what they can do, or you have some predetermined things, it's easier for them to execute. One of the things that I like about um, uh, the Ritz Carlton, which I reference often, they're wonderful, wonderful teachers on how to create an excellent client experience. One of the reasons that they execute really well is they have a predetermined amount for the ladies and gentlemen staying there that the ladies and gentlemen working there can just do without asking permission. If they see an opportunity to enhance the experience of someone staying there, they just do it. They have permission to do it. They don't have to ask a manager who asks a general manager who sends an email to the CFO who maybe hears back from the accounting department the next day. And by then the person is checked out and the opportunity is gone. They're able to do it right on the spot. So consider that in your practice, consider organizing some of those things. I think those um, moments that we catch things are really where to create an extra experience. So there's some like foundations of client contact that's critical that we're going to talk about. Varying the topics enhances that even more. Some little extras to make people feel special, like you know maybe an article of value, handwritten note, small gift that's unexpected, things like that really help. But these extras are like you know hearing um, uh, someone's dog isn't feeling well and they got to take them to the vet. There's an opportunity and whoever happened to be calling them, it could be anyone, even if someone was scheduling meetings, they might hear that and say, you know what? We're going to send a little gift to their dog, a feel better gift, just a little something. Just those little, little things we hear from people and the little things we do, sometimes those make the biggest difference. And if we can have some of those, you know, items of value or little touches organized, it makes it easier for the team to execute. But to empower them, they maybe have a small budget with a small group of clients, like your top tier clients, maybe having a small budget that people could execute and just do something without having to ask permission to create some wow, it really makes a big deal, makes it happen faster. It really makes a difference for those people. And um, that's the kind of stuff that's difficult, I think, for a lot of practices. It, it takes time and uh, the time is uh, usually the thing that holds a lot of practices back from executing some of these steps. So listen, everything we talk about, it's not for everybody 
in your practice. And by every, I, I mean clients. You don't have to do all this stuff for everyone. You don't have to write a personal handwritten note to every single client in your practice. That might be overkill. But you know what? Your top 10 clients may be worth the effort. Whatever your top tier segment, maybe your top 10% of clients, you implement some of these things with. So if you catch just one thing from here that would enhance the experience with your clients, that's what we're looking for. Look for one new idea, one new little thing, whether it's from the example, something that you hear from um, our awesome guests on what they're doing. That's what you're looking for. And it's making a little bit better step each year. So in the book, Atomic Habits, it talks about getting 1% better every year. So how could your client experience be enhanced by 1% every day or every year? Just make it a little bit better as you go. And it's an ongoing journey. It's not like, oh, we arrived here and we're done. You know, the Ritz-Carlton isn't done. They don't just say, oh, we made it and, and we stop being excellent. It's always evolving. And I think in our industry, we're going to continually have to involve what we do. And remember, a full service advisor like you, that's very different from the low cost options like Vanguard, Fidelity, Schwab. What you're offering is something different. And it's got to feel like it's something different. Most of the clients that leave the full service advisor, because it's much higher price, they go to a lower priced option. A lot of times it's because that, that experience, that service isn't there. And it's perceived that I could pay a third or a quarter for the same thing because I'm not getting a lot. So it really is a big deal, this topic. So we'll talk about more examples, but I want to uh, get in here with uh, Roger and hear more about his awesome client experience. Roger's running a tremendous practice down in Miami, Florida, works with some very, very affluent clients and the experience is a big deal to them. So Roger, just talk us at a high level here. How are you thinking about the client experience in your practice? I, yeah, I, first of all, John, everything you said was great uh, and, and I'm excited to get a chance to speak to people here. Uh, for us, I think the client experience is a reflection of who we are and and the standards that we set, you know, for for ourselves. Uh, it really is everything, as you said. I mean, it 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 lets our clients. Uh, it, it's important that our clients feel heard. It's important that our clients feel like they're engaged with us. Um, you know, I think one of the things I'm most proud of is that our clients show up to their meetings. I mean, especially now that we're mostly online, we rarely have people uh, who reschedule or, you know, just or no show. Uh, they're, they're pretty good about, uh, about getting here. So, um, but, uh, you know, as, as we see the client experience, we use the gold standard. We also talk about Danny Meyer's book, Setting the Table, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal book. Uh, you know, he got a chance to speak at one of the top producer uh, events a couple of years ago, and it was just awesome. He he references the quote from Maya Angelou that, you know, people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And that's really important. So that's a that has to be reflected by every team member uh, in the practice, whether they're new or they've been there for a decade or more, they've got to, to walk the walk. It's a great insight. And uh, I love experiences from other industries and learning from it, right? In my in the restaurant industry, um, Ritz Carlton in the um, uh, hotel resort industry. I mean, it's the service industry. They're serving other humans. We can learn a ton from those businesses and apply them to our business. We're in the business of working with humans. Yes, we work with their money and their finances and their financial plan, but it's the same thing. And I love that quote. It's how they're made to feel. And to me, that's the difference in client service and the client experience. You know, service is kind of expected, right? I mean, when you stay at a hotel, you expect a, a clean room. When you eat at a restaurant, you expect, you know, safe food and a decent meal. When you go to a financial advisor, you expect decent advice and decent returns. Like these are the basics, they're, they're expected. The experience is yeah, you know, what's the unexpected or the byproduct or the product of this product is how do they feel as a result of doing business with you? It's such it's such a great insight. So um, so let's let's keep peeling back the, this onion, Roger. I mean, what are some of the ways that you've made a lot of your top clients, you know, feel great 
about mm -hmm. the relationship or feel special that might be different than the average offering that's out there? Yeah, well, we have a, a, a saying in our office, you know, never miss an opportunity to recognize an important event in a client's life. So if a client has a, a baby or even a new grandchild or they get a new house or a new job or uh, you know anything like that or they retire, that's always an opportunity to send something, uh, whether it's a note, as you said, a book, flowers. Uh, we happen to have uh, the, I, I might be one of the largest clients of the florist in our town. They also happen to be a client of mine, so I don't mind spending money there. But we send, you know, beautiful arrangements to clients all the time for all sorts of things. We even send it when we screw up. <laughs> we, you know, we'll send it, sorry, we, you know, we messed this up or whatever. We, We'll, we'll do that. So, I mean, and my, uh, as you said, my, you know, my uh, current assistant has the uh, authority to go ahead and, and send it because she knows that that's what I'm going to want to do. And, and she'll say, hey, you know, just so you know, I sent a, an arrangement to the client uh, for on their new job. So it, it's happening automatically. You know, the unwows, I mean, we're humans. It happens mm -hmm. in, yeah. in the Ritz Carlton and their service excellence program. They, they talk about that, that we're not perfect. We mess up all the time. But I think one of the things they do great is they turn unwows into wow, just like Roger's talking about. So give us an example there. What's a, what's maybe an example of, oh my gosh, we messed up. Let's make this person feel special. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I had a client recently uh, who wanted a distribution from their retirement account. And it was an unusual request from this client, uh, you know, and and the person that they spoke with in my office happened to be really, really sick on the day that they were supposed to make this distribution. So it's supposed to happen in the future and it ended up not happening. So it didn't happen uh, on the day it was supposed to happen. We found out, I only found out about it a few days later when the client reached out to me and letting me know that, hey, I didn't get my money. And that's a big deal. I mean, you know, when your clients don't get that. So we called, we, we said, look, this is not an excuse, but just an explanation of what happened. You know, the person who was supposed to send it had a stomach bug that day and, you know, wasn't in the office and, and, and wasn't on our radar, uh, you know, but we, we sent a small box of Godiva chocolate saying, we're sorry. And the client responded to us saying, you didn't have to do that. Thank you so much. And I think that's, that's the ultimate reflection of, of the gratitude they felt. It's nice. That's a really yeah. nice, just little thing. So it, so you're hearing there's, there's, you know, some situational things that, that are really big. So Roger, what's the difference in like your planned touches that you know, you're going to send and these like responsive ones that your team's on call to execute? What, what does that look like? So uh, for our top tier clients, we're always sending something during the holidays. Um, and, uh, you know, so we have, we have a marketing calendar booked out with all these things we're doing throughout the year, uh, for many years for mother's day, we were sending uh, Starbucks gift cards, $5 Starbucks gift cards. Uh, the response from that was awesome. Uh, one year for father's day, we sent out, uh, you know, Ameriprise water bottles. I still see my clients, you know, bringing them like to golf events that I do with them. And, you know, they're, they're like five years old and they still, you know, this is, they use it every day. Um, so, you know, those things we've done, it's important too, not to let things get stale, you know, so we're, we're always trying to think of new ideas and refresh it. Uh, and recently during COVID, we actually, instead of sending these Starbucks gift cards, we sent a note to all our clients saying we're donating to the local food shelter. You know, we, we've used this budget for that. And, and people, the response was overwhelming. Uh, you know, not that clients could have gone to Starbucks like, or, I don't know, during, during COVID, they weren't going out. So, um, so that was great. Um, and we've continued to do that through doing charitable gifts uh, and, and letting clients know, you know, we're making these donations on their behalf that that has gotten us a lot of miles too. It's a really great insights. And it's one of the most common questions that, that we get from advisors. What are others doing? How do they go about it? So, you know, planning some things in advance really helps. And then also at being prepared for, you know, it's really being proactive uh, around the reactive things that are going to come up. You know, someone has a life event, someone's retiring or, you know, we messed up, whatever it might be to be prepared to send some things out is, is really huge. The, the other common question we get, Roger, is, um, you know, more in that fundamentals in the client conversations th throughout the year. What, what does that look like? How many times you're interacting with people? Is it the same? Do vary, you know, topics? What, what does that look like throughout the year? Yeah, yeah. So probably for 
gosh, eight years or more now, we have adopted this quarterly contact with unique agendas, uh, kind of like a seasonal advice uh, model. We have adopted it. We're constantly changing it. We're constantly trying to refresh it. So last year we went to Money Guide. Uh, this year we're going to go back to Nava Plan, and you know, just we want to show clients new things. Uh, you know, every time and, and make that experience new. I think also because we're engaging with clients online, it's really important that your PowerPoints are good and, you know, you, you, you work those out and, and you're showing clients what they want to see. So we, we spend a lot of time and energy building that out for each quarter. Uh, and, you know, as I said before, the fact that clients are showing up to these meetings, that they're engaged in these meetings is showing that we're providing value and that they're, they're you know, they, they like what they're seeing. And that leads to net flows. And new business, whether it be, you know, an insurance policy or rollover or, you know, if someone gets an inheritance. I mean, that is what matters is that you're front and center, that you're contacting those clients regularly. And if and if you really want to work with affluent people, you know, they expect that level of service. They're getting that level of service. And maybe they're a member of a country club. Uh, you know, they're they're used to that, you know, being treated uh, in a special way. So it's it's important that we do that. One other thing I want to note too about the client experience, we make sure that for every meeting uh, that we're doing online, that somebody is there at the beginning of the meeting or even a few minutes before the meeting. So even if I'm not there, that someone on my team is there or, you know, they're going to send a note, hey, Roger might be running, you know, a few minutes late to the meeting. You never want the client to show up to a meeting and, you know, feel like, oh, where, you know, where are they? Where, you know, where's the team? So we're, we're very good about that, about being prompt. That's a that's an important part. And again, a reflection of who we are, you know, that we that we show up and we show up on time. That's excellent. What's what's a highlight of some of your your topics these days then that are that are common in those those four main contacts? Yeah. So the the uh, I'll, I'll go through it quickly. Right now we're working on taxes. Uh, we're doing it's really thirty minute meetings most of the time. Uh, sometimes they'll go a little bit longer if the clients you know really want to catch up, but generally they're only half an hour. Uh, and we're just going through, hey, here's the new tax laws that are changing. You want to make sure that we're, you know, we're tax loss harvesting. Uh, I can't tell you how many clients who have money at other places when I talk to them about tax loss harvesting and I ask them, hey, is this happening in your other non-qualified account? They have no idea. None of them, they go, oh, I don't know. No one said anything about it. So, and I mean, that's an opportunity. Uh, we're talking to them about, you know, Roth conversions, Um you know, even if clients don't qualify or they're not really great candidates for Roth conversions, you want to be having that conversation. You don't want them to hear about a Roth conversion from somebody else. Uh, so you want to just be saying, hey, you're not a candidate for this, but let me quickly explain what this is and who this is ideal for. And that could also spur like, oh, you know, that might be great for my parents. They should be doing Roth conversions. Uh, so we, you know, we do that. Then the first quarter is financial position and goal tracking, net worth, cash flow, NAVA plan. Uh, really in depth. The second quarter is uh, investments and asset allocation. Third quarter is protection and insurance. For some of our clients, that's just a, an email summary as opposed to a meeting. And, and in our practice, we've also developed this diamond team. So our clients know that, hey, not every meeting is going to be with Roger. Uh, you're going to be meeting with other people on the team. And this is, a, this is awesome. You're, you have a whole team working with you, you know, so that's been another evolution, and it's been very well received by our clients. They don't even ask for me, you know, when when I'm not in the meeting. They don't. They don't. Where's Roger? I mean, it's not even a. They have no expectation I'm going to be there. So that's been a, an evolution of the of the experience as well, which has been nothing but positive. It's a big one. We've talked a little bit yeah. about you know diamond teams. A lot of you ask about them there. I mean, to see it in action. I mean, this is the benefit. It's Roger's not overwhelmed, which. You were at one time, right? <laughs> There's other advisors are are helping, and clients love it. They value it. I think it's a fear for um, a, a lot of advisors that you know I have to be the one giving advice, and I'm the only one that can do it. And we hold back the other advisors on the team. But you know what? When you organize the topics, it makes it easy to say, you know what? This advisor is really good at this. They're going to talk to you about that. That's their specialty. And I always make the um, uh, relation to the medical industry. It might be, um, hey, I'm helping with these certain things. You know, you want to talk about your knee and that knee pain you have going. Well, we have a knee specialist and they're going to talk about it. They know a lot more about knee knees than I do. And they're going to talk about that. And then we'll talk about your elbow in the next meeting. So um, it, it it helps, you know, keep it fresh for clients. So I love it. You heard every year 
They're doing something different. And every meeting is a different topic. So it's always fresh. There's never that stale just service meeting. It's always something new and fresh. And it's even rotating the people on the team that are conducting these and reaching out. So great, great insights there. Always keeping it fresh, always keeping it new. I think that's huge, huge learning for everyone on this fundamental of um, the interactions, them happening, they're happening pretty frequent. And you know what, the, the summertime one is is great because you know, people are a little bit busier in their personal lives in the summertime, yeah. right? Especially if they have kids and school is out. Um, it's a great time to do that. Not everyone needs the full investment review that just, or, or I'm sorry, uh, protection review, risk right. management review, insurance review, whatever you prefer to call it. Um, not everyone needs that. So some do, and some have big opportunities, especially if you're tying in estate planning or something like that. And to me, like taxes, estate planning, they're topics that most advisors don't get to. So, you know, Roger's working with, you know, some of you may be surprised, what do you mean they just people have other, you know, accounts? These are like high seven, figure, eight figure clients that the Roger works with, very affluent. And so they've got a lot of wealth in a lot of places. And you heard that, that simple, just tax off harvesting, just talking about it, reviewing it every year. Most advisors don't do this stuff. And if you're having service meetings, it's hard to fit it in. It's hard to know. But if that's all you're doing, that last meeting of the year, this this end of the year, it's very easy to give that advice to get to it. And people love it. People absolutely love it. It's a great enhancement to the experience, to the topics. And I think it's a tremendously referable moment. It's going to lead to those other accounts coming over, but it's also going to lead to what a referable topic to bring that. Oh, my gosh, why did you help me save on taxes? Wiley's managing my money. Yeah, I, I just to add to that, I mean, the, we're in these tax meetings, we're talking about, you know, are you also max funding your retirement plan? The, the limits are going up for next year. Make sure that you you fill it up. I mean, if you're over 50, you can put in $30,000 a year into your 401k. The other thing we're bringing up is savers tax credits. So like, you know, most of our clients don't qualify for a savers tax credit, but their their kids who are right out of school might. And, you know, you might say to them, and, and we, so we've gotten a few clients this year from the Savers Tax Credit idea by just saying, hey, did you know, you know, your kid who's graduated from school and is making 40 grand a year, they can get a, a full credit from the IRS, uh, you know, up to 50% of their contribution. Now, I tell my clients, you're not going to get that, sadly, but they will. And, you know, if, if, you're, if you just want to help them seed money into a retirement account, maybe you can match their contribution, you know, they can participate, but you've got all this money. There's no way you're going to get money into Roths. Well, give it to your kids. Have, you know, have a 22-year-old with a Roth IRA. And that has been very well received. We've opened up two accounts this month uh, for clients' kids. I mean, you know, just engaging the next generation, another opportunity with the Savers Tax Credit. It's awesome. <clears throat> so yeah. let's let's talk about the future. You talked about the the evolution you're always evolving the frequency, the length of these interactions with clients, the topics you're evolving, you know, what you deliver throughout the year, um, the touches you do, the, the you know, responsive gifts uh, that you do. So as you look ahead to the client experience, what do you think that you will be evolving and continually improving in your practice? Yeah, that's a great question and, and something we're always thinking about during business planning. I, I think for us, it's really more of this team approach. Mm. And having, you know, specialists in every role. I mean, I, I could imagine a day where we've got, you know, a CFA who's meeting with them for their investment review, a CPA who's meeting with them for the fourth quarter tax planning, uh, you know, someone who's a, a CLU or something meeting for them, the insurance, just having these very specialized roles within the practice. And, and the clients know that they've got all these specialists, you know, working on their behalf. So I think that's in the future where we'd like to get to. I mean, we're filling that in through the diamond team now. Um, but, but I think that's, that's where the industry is headed, where especially for affluent people, they're going to have a team of experts who are well-educated and well-versed and, you know, know what they're doing. And, and those are the ones who are going to be delivering that advice to them. So, so that to me is the point of, you know, the next five years, 10 years of where we need to be. Excellent. It's really, yeah. really excellent insights. I love pulling back the current of, uh, practices that really deal with affluent people. I think there's a lot that to take away. And, uh, and and I think that's a great example of, of for everyone listening, where to focus your efforts on polishing your client experience, especially at this time of year. We've got a refresh coming in just, what, two and a half weeks. It's the new year. 
and uh, what a great time to refresh and start some things differently. But just re remember this, you don't have to do this stuff with everyone. You could do this yeah, with three yeah. clients. You do with 10 clients. You do with your top 10% only. Doesn't have to be with everyone. I always say that the uh, the diet or the watered down version could go for the next tier of clients and you could do half for the tier below that. Um, but build your services for your top tier. Really cater to your top people. They produce the most revenue. And if your services are designed for those people, that's where you'll get referrals. Most practices or services by accident are designed for their middle clients, and that's where they get referrals in the middle of their book. So you really want to be thinking up here, design your service up here, just like the Ritz Carlton and so many wonderful, wonderful uh, service uh, organizations and, and businesses do. Design it for them, get more referrals there, and uh, it's such an exciting thing. So again, the most important part of the business, one of my favorite topics. Um, I think most of you that I work with, I think everyone has this client experience timeline. If anyone needs it, happy to email it. Email me on uh, at Ameriprise at my D2 email address. We also have our extraordinary financial advisor brand launching. Uh, we're still affiliated with D2, but uh, we're just branding our our, our group what we do within that. So you'll see a lot of that here in the coming weeks and uh, and certainly in uh, early 2023. So uh, anyway, you want to reach out to me, we'll send this stuff to you. We got a lot of other uh, uh, tools when it comes to client experience, but a big deal. Uh, Roger, thanks so much for being on, pulling thanks, back John. the curtain, sharing with everyone. It was really awesome to hear. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. Great All job. right, everyone, go get them. Looking forward to hearing about your results. Happy New Year. Happy holidays to everyone. Please let us know how else we can help and looking forward to hearing about your awesome results. Everyone, let me get a good one. Stay awesome out there. We'll see you.